So yesterday we had ourselves the news that the NHL has a newest, highest AAV player in the entire league. Austin Matthews, franchise center, signed a $13.25 million AAV extension, which kicks in in 24-25. And with this idea in mind, it had everybody here on the West Coast asking a simple question. What does this mean for Elias Pettersson? Now, it also helps that on the same day yesterday, or did this video come out two days ago? I'm not too sure. We had ourselves an interview done with Elliot Friedman, wherein he asks Pedersen a bunch of questions about the contract situation. This interview was published on Twitter, and it's kind of outrageous. Pedersen is in Stockholm, Sweden, and Friedman is literally there with him on a boat. Like, yeah, I said it was outrageous, but it's cool. At the end of the day, Elliot Friedman, for some reason, is across the pond having video interviews done with professional camera crews, and Elias Pettersson is there answering questions about his preference living in the city and his contract extension negotiations. Essentially, what we gathered from this video interview was that Elias Pettersson was in no rush to sign. And this was validated by Rick Dollywall, who went out there and said this. Two weeks ago, I mentioned it was all quiet on the Pedersen contract talks and there is no rush from either side. A new deal was never happening this summer. Now, of course, this is not the same as Matthews and Nylander. Elias Pedersen will expire in 23-24 as an RFA. So, if the worst-case doomsday scenario comes where Elias Pettersson does not want to re-sign with the Canucks, they have the right to trade him. They're going to hold on to his rights. You're going to get a Matthew Kachuk-esque type of return here. It's not going to be he just up and away leaves like Gaudreau, Matthews, Nylander, and the Canucks are left with nothing. So, no panic on that front. But you had yourselves some more conversation ignited by not only this interview done with Friedman, but the Austin Matthews contract extension as well as to how this could all affect PD. Cam Robinson went out there and said this after the Matthews signing. Why would Elias Pettersson sign right now? He can go off for another career year, see what direction the team is going, and get a better gauge on the cap ceiling. His value is only going up. He's smart and I think he'll maximize everything. Jeff Patterson then replies, saying this, I hear ya, but I can think of 90 million reasons to sign now if he really wanted to, but I can also think of 100 million reasons to wait. The only actual risk is a career-threatening injury. Virtually any other scenario sees him at least maintaining the value he holds right now. Why not bet on yourself and have a better understanding of what you're committing to for the majority of your career? Pedersen has been very adamant about wanting to win. He talked about this in the interview with Friedman on the boat. He even said this as far back as a few years ago. Here's a tweet made by Grady, citing an Elias Pedersen interview from a few years before he had signed his last contract. Rough Google Translate via Canucks Army, Petey has emphasized the importance of winning back then, and the team has not done so since. Here is the... Pedersen quote from a few years ago, Bodine asked Pedersen to talk about what kind of deal he would prefer to sign with the Canucks. I want to stay in Vancouver now, but I also want to play for a team that's winning and has the chance to go far into the playoffs every year. I feel like we've got a chance to do that next year, and if we have that chance when my next deal expires, I don't know. I just want to play where there's a chance of winning. Now, this comment was made in an era before the Canucks actually sucked as badly as they did towards the end of the Benning era. This was from two years ago, two years back, the Canucks had not made the OEL trade, for example, and everything kind of went south after that trade was made. So, you could understand that when it comes to Pedersen's vision of the team, how he feels about the future of the Vancouver Canucks, this is also important, because as far back as two years ago, he was already saying, yeah, I want to stay committed to a team that knows how to win, or that has a chance to win. The Canucks, unfortunately, have not won much, but... There is hope for the future. This team, as we've talked about many times over the past few weeks, has indeed gotten better. But with this Austin Matthews thing presenting itself in the spotlight, now, if you're Elias Pettersson, all you gotta do is just take a look and say, huh, that guy's making a lot of money. And I'm in a position where if I signed right now, I could make a bunch of money too, but if I wait it out, 
if I go out there and have a better season than I did in 22-23, that in which he's already said he wants to do. There was another interview of Pedersen getting on the ice in Sweden, I believe. They asked him, and he said that he wants to best his last season's point production of 102 points in 23-24. That's pretty bold. Definitely bold. But when it comes to a superstar caliber player like Elias Pedersen, I mean, those type of comments are pretty fair to make. To help us expand this point further, we're going over onto an article published by Ian McIntyre yesterday after the Matthews signing. Why the upcoming season could be a crucial tipping point for Pedersen and the Canucks. McIntyre, link is going to be in the description by the way, goes out there and writes this, Unable to agree this summer on a long-term extension, the most important thing that Elias Pedersen and the Canucks have in common is that both sides desperately want to win. The team's success or failure this season could influence Pedersen's decision about re-signing when he becomes an RFA in 2024. This article then has a short interview done with Pat Brisson, the agent of Elias Pedersen. He told me I want to focus on my game. I want to focus on the Canucks being better. You know, there's a lot of changes lately, and I think we owe it all to ourselves to just, you know, go in and do the best we can. There's a lot more media attention in Canada, right? And you don't want it to become a distraction. The main focus will be for Pedersen to perform, and hopefully he and the team will be in a better place this year. It's more that than anything else. And to evaluate, both sides can evaluate. Let's all sit down at the end of the year and explore where we're at. Pat Brisson emphasized that Elise Pedersen becomes only an RFA next summer when his current three-year bridge deal expires, and that UFA status won't arrive for at least another year beyond that. The article expands even further on Pedersen's drive to improve himself. Brock Besser said this, that Pedersen wants to be up there with McDavid and Dreisaitl. He's showing the type of season he can have, but I wouldn't put it past him to have an even better season. I think his ceiling goes higher for sure. I don't even know how high it could be. He just wants us to win. Us guys that have been here for a while are sick of losing and want to make the playoffs. Pedersen is really driven to make the playoffs and be on a winning team. He wants to be this guy on a winning team. And so, while it may seem sort of like a backhanded thing, I remember when the Pedersen comments initially, like two years ago, when he said he wants to be on a team long-term that can win. I remember when he said that, there were a few Canucks fans that were saying, oh wow, look at that, Pedersen only really cares about winning, he doesn't really care about the Vancouver Canucks themselves. And while that's a fair critique, I can understand where people are coming from. Oh, the implication is if the Canucks start losing, Pedersen might leave. The fact is... It's been two years since then, and the Canucks have not made the playoffs. They've been bad. They had the entire Benning OEL thing, they had the Bruce Boudreaux bump, and then the Bruce Boudreaux slump, and now they have Talkit, and it's been a few years, but no real success in that time frame. Now that you know how it feels, now that you understand that this is what the players go through, this is where a guy grows and eventually becomes good, but if the team around him doesn't have any extenuating success, do you start to see where that perspective comes from? Now it's starting to make more sense, where it's like, yeah, we watched the team lose. We watched the team year in and year out fail to make the playoffs and be disappointing at the start of the year, have bad slums at the start, okay runs in the middle, and then they absolutely storm past the competition at the end of the season to screw themselves out of a top lottery spot. We've seen this multiple times, and the cycle of mediocrity does not feel great for us to watch. If we're stat watching at least, I mean, if you go to one game a year, you go at the end of the season when they're playing Calgary and Calgary's all injured and everything, they seem not great, and then the Canucks win, like, okay, that's a good game to go to, but like, for a progressionable timeline of success, the Canucks have just not really done that. And this upcoming season, based off of everything we've seen from the players involved, from the team they're building, this team looks like it could be the team to finally push for a playoff spot. And if they show off well, as they did in the 2020 bubble, if Elias Pettersson is looking at this team and saying, yeah, this is a team that I feel like I can lead to a third round, to a Stanley Cup Finals, then that is the outcome we're looking for. Not for his pity, not for him to sign just because, oh, he's committed to Vancouver, but because he feels that there is a team here that can win. Has Patrick Alvin built that team? Who really knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire situation with Pedersen? How do you think the Matthews extension from yesterday affects everything? I know we didn't dive too deep into it, but there was some sort of a shadow casted onto the situation from Matthews getting that huge dollar amount deal, especially since it was only four years long. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Pedersen and the updates we have gotten? I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And... Bye.